Hello, hello, music student. Today we are going over our unit two. We are on lesson six talking about the melody. Now our vocabulary has a lot to do with things that we have talked about in class before, but maybe it has not been explained correctly. I'm not sure. It's okay. Uh, so our vocabulary starts with cadence, which is the ending of a phrase or longer section of music. Climax, which is a distinct high point in a melody where the energy of the melody is focused. Phrase, it's a part of the melody that conforms to complete mu a musical idea. Sequence is a compositional tool that repeats a musical phrase at a different pitch level. Tune, which is an easily identifiable, singable, and memorable melody. Not every end is the goal. The end of a melody is not the goal. And yet, if a melody has not reached the end, it has not reached its goal. This is the parable by Frederick Nietzsche. Unit 1, melody was defined quite simply as a musical line of pitches played or sung one after the other. We also identified some basic terms that we could use to describe a melody, such as contour and its range. However, these are obviously not the only things to be said about the melody. The point of a good melody is just not is not just about making it through a series of notes um, that are played up one after the other, but the good melody tells a story and takes you on a journey. You can soar really high, push forward, hold back. Good melodies make us interested in what will happen next, just like a good story does. And the best melodies do not just tell the story, they bring us along on that story, drawing us along to make us feel the same emotions that are built into the very melody itself. Now in this lesson, we're gonna study more of the components that make up good melodies and expand our vocabulary so that you can discuss melody very intelligently. And when I talk about it in class, we can understand each other. Uh, you will end the lesson by writing some simple melodies while using the concepts you have learned. That is not something you will be doing, but it's okay. If that's something you would like to do, I can open it for you, but we're not gonna be working on that. Talking about melody, one term that is often used as a synonym for melody, synonym, not cinnamon, uh, is tune. Although tunes are melodies, not all melodies are necessarily tunes. A tune is an easily identifiable, singable, and memorable melody. Examples of tunes are folk songs, Christmas carols, hymns, and patriotic songs. And learning about melody is especially helpful to examine tunes because the elements of melody are especially clear in most tunes. Take, for instance, the two lines from the hymn, Amazing Grace. Several important mel melodic concepts can be illustrated in these two lines. As we discuss these concepts, sing through the tune, either out loud or possible in your head, and think about how they apply as you feel when you sing. Ba -da, da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Da 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 Tunes divide naturally into smaller parts called phrases. Although it may sometimes be difficult to tell where the phrases are in some melodies with a tune, the division is usually pretty clear. The phrases tend to be aligned with the lyrics that accompany the tune and are sometimes made clear by the presence of rhyming words or punctuation marks. One way to divide the beginning of Amazing Grace into two phrases is above. Sometimes it's a good way to see how a tune divides into phrases and examine how you breathe while you're singing. Usually, uh, breath tends to come at natural division points, such as the end of phrases, which is when I say don't breathe in the middle of that phrase, you'll know what I'm talking about. One feature of the phrase of a tune is that they tend to balance well with each other. In Amazing Grace, the first two phrases are the same length. This, this similarity lets us know what to expect as we sing the tune and provides some sort of phrases to fit together uh, into a song that makes sense. This does not mean that every phrase has to be the same length by any means. They generally are, but not always. When phrases differ in length, it usually is to draw attention to the music or the lyrics in that phrase. Two, two ways that phrase can, the phrases in a tune can balance out with each other is the parallelism and contrast. Parallelism refers to the similarity between the two phrases and can come in many forms. For example, the notes in the first half of each of the phrases in 6.1 are exactly the same, a feature that is also repeated in the last phrase of Amazing Grace. Another way to accomplish parallelism through is through sequence, which is when a musical phrase is repeated on a different pitch. Contrast refers to how a phrase are different phrases are different from neighboring phrases. Contrast provides a variety and it adds interest to that tune. Phrases can contrast in pitch, length, and dynamics, among other things. 
Good tunes tend to include some, both some parallelism and some contrasting elements. This allows them to maintain interest while providing a comfortable structure that lets us know what to expect. To extend the story metaphor from Friedrich Nietzsche, wrote a quote about the beginning of this lesson. A good tune has a beginning, a middle, and an end. The beginning of the tune is easy to identify. To be effective, a tune should catch our interest. The important thing about the middle of a tune is that it should sound like it's going somewhere. Good tunes have a climax, a distinct high point where the energy of the tune is the most focused. In Amazing Grace, the climax comes at the end of the second phrase, on the word me. It's not a coincidence that this also happens on the highest note of the tune. Usually the highest point of the melody is also where the energy is most focused. The final feature of a good story ending, the final feature is a good ending. And the musical equivalent of an ending is a cadence. The ending of a phrase or longer section of music. Musical cadence come at points where the tune either pauses for a moment or stops completely, and they provide at least some, of, some sense of finality. Well-written cadences will tell us where we are in a tune, whether there is more to come or whether we have finally arrived at the end. And those are something we need to go over, whether they go over in this course or not, we do need to talk about those. Um, here is a listening exercise. Please listen to it, even though we are not uh, writing these melodies out for a particular grade. Although it may seem daunting already to be writing melodies at this point in the course, no worries. We're gonna start with some very basic examples. As you work through these examples, you may come up with your own ideas that expand on a complete tune of your own. This is something that if you wish to do on your own, it would be awesome. You can just send me a picture of it. If it's not, it's okay. I know you guys have got a lot of other stuff going on and this is more uh, something to help you become a better musician, not necessarily work through your studies. Although becoming a better musician helps with your studies. Anyway, uh, we do have questions, which are basically the two terms that you can scroll back up and uh, know, or if you just basically generally know them, it's a great idea. Go ahead and answer these. Don't forget to hit submit. You're doing a fantastic job. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Please ask questions if you have them, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.